Hello and let's talk about Yes Bank. The government has moved to put a cap on withdrawals for the, from the bank for the next month and is looking at a major restructuring plan. However, is this too little and too late? As the people of the country watch the crisis unfolding with apprehension, many key questions remain. How did the government allow this crisis to escalate to this level? Where did the bank make mistakes and how was this slide not stopped earlier? We'll discuss all these points, but before that, here are some basic facts about the crisis. As we mentioned earlier, the RBI has stepped in to supersede the board of the Yes Bank. This is a very, very rare move in the history of banking in India. The RBI has also imposed a moratorium on withdrawals for the next one month. People can only withdraw up to Rs 50,000 from their own accounts in Yes Bank over the next month. That's until April 3rd. Rather belatedly, the banking regulator has also acknowledged that Yes Bank has undergone a steady decline. The RBI yesterday imposed a lockdown after the bank failed to muster investors. Yes Bank's management had claimed that Microsoft, a Canadian lumber tycoon or Cerebrus Capital, one or more of these would invest fresh funds into the bank. But nothing of this is materialized. Now, an administration administrator has taken over the bank's management and Yes Bank is set for either a merger or a takeover. The burden would be passed on to possibly a consortium of LIC and SBI, which is the biggest lender. The shares of Yes Bank tanked on the indices on Friday, losing more than half their market value. As of now, there is no real plan in sight for the bank from the government, though it has said that it is drawing up a plan of action. The NPAs, that is the non-performing assets of Yes, yes Bank, have been steadily climbing, reaching Rs 3,277 crores in 2018-19. It has a Rs 2.09 lakh crore deposit book as of the end of September 2019. Earlier in the day, Pragya from NewsClick spoke to senior journalist Paranjoy Guha Thakurta on this crisis and the reasons for it, as well as how it might unfold. Here is what he had to say. Paranjoy, what is the reason for the sudden lockdown on Yes Bank and what happens to the people who've got deposits there? What happens to the... Um, plan that Yes Bank had talked about of having all these investors who are going to come in and pump the bank up. What's going on? Pragya, the, the crisis, crisis in, in Yes, yes bank, bank was, was coming. coming. A, a lot, lot of people, people a, lot a lot of financial, financial analysts could, could sense, sense that, that a crisis, crisis was growing. growing. Right. Firstly, say, say analysts, analysts like, like Hemendra Hazari, Hazari, if you, if you go, go back, back to the, the interview, interview I did, did with, with him for right. right. he, he described that, that internally within, within the, the bank, uh, it, was it was like, like a Shakespearean tragedy, tragedy where the, the promoters, promoters were fighting each other. other. Mm -hmm. now, now, what, what happened, happened is, from, from there, there, analysts like, like Bloomberg, and Andy Mukherjee, Hemendra Hazari, Hazari others said that there, that there was something terribly wrong with the, the bank. bank. It, it had it, it was it had, had loaned money to large, large numbers of companies and conglomerates, and including India Post, Housing Finance, finance including, including the Reliance, Anil Dhirubhai Amani Group, many others, and many, many of these loans had, had become non-performing non assets. assets. Mm -hmm. now, now, the, the Reserve, Reserve Bank, Bank of India, India the country's central, central bank, bank and banking, banking regulator, it literally forced the promoter, Mr. Rana Kapoor, to, to quit. quit. He, he, he literally he was told, you go. go. Mm -hmm. But the crisis wasn't stemmed. Today, Today we have a situation where the Reserve Bank, Bank of India, India in, in order to, to prevent a deeper crisis, a systemic crisis, because, because after all, all, it is a large private sector, sector bank. bank. It's, it's among, among the, the largest, largest private sector, sector banks. banks. And, and if, if a bank, bank like this, this collapses, it sends, sends shock waves, waves right, right through, through the economy, economy which, which has already happened. happened. The, the stock, stock markets, markets have collapsed, collapsed. Uh, the, the stock, stock prices have collapsed, collapsed. And, and even the, the stock, stock market indices, indices have collapsed. collapsed. Now, now, what happens, happens is, is, after the experience of the, the PMC, PMC, the Punjab Maharashtra, Maharashtra Cooperative Bank, Bank. Yes. the Reserve Bank has realized, realized that it better, better get its act together. together. So, so it, it's given it itself, itself a month, month and, and, and to try and, and ensure that, that, that uh, the, 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 the bank, bank 
uh, sort of survives, there is a talk that the Life Insurance Corporation, the State Bank of India would pump in money to save the bank. Now, when you look at it from the point of from, from the point of view of the depositors, depositors. already there, there are news reports that, that uh, the depositors have been lying, are lining up, queuing up outside uh, 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 the automatic, automatic teller machines. machines. And, and what, what the Reserve Bank of India has done, done in the case of the PMC, PMC it said that you, you can't, can't withdraw more than 10,000 rupees in a month. month. In, the in the case, case of Yes Bank, Bank they're saying you can't withdraw more than 50,000 rupees in a month. month. Yes. That is the third of March. Irrespective of, of however, what about, what about, however much money you may have in your account. account. This, this is to, to prevent the, the crisis from, from becoming, becoming deeper. deeper. Mm -hmm. it's, it's extremely sad that the banking, the banking regulator ignored the warning signals and, and allowed the situation to, to deteriorate to a point, point where, where you had to take these kind of crisis measures. measures. Now, now, and, and, and it's, it's also sad, sad that, that much, much of the mainstream, the mainstream media didn't report on this. Yes, yes, yes Bank, Bank has been, been a major advertiser in the past, past. it has been a major uh, uh, sponsor, sponsor of events in the past, past. So, uh, uh, including, including events, events by, uh, sponsored, sponsored by some of the largest financial publications, publications and, 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 and functions where you see the top brass, brass of the country, country from the, the prime minister, minister to the finance minister, 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 everybody comes. comes. So, so, you know, you know uh, the, 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 this nexus that, that we see has, has prevented much of, of the population of this country, country including those, those who have their hard-earned hard money, money and savings in the Yes Bank, Bank from, from realizing, realizing how, how deep, deep the crisis was, was how, how serious, serious the crisis was. Now, and the government now, says that they will solve the problem in about a month, that the lockdown will continue uh, only for about a month and that the administrator, the government will come up with a plan. Is there any sight of this revival plan um, uh, in pa on paper so far? Nothing, Nothing on, on paper, paper so far. far. We, have we have to wait, wait and watch. watch. The Reserve, Reserve Bank, Bank of India, India has appointed its, its uh, representative as uh, a kind of administrator. administrator. Uh, as, as I told you, there, there is talk, there is speculation that, that the Life Insurance, Insurance Corporation, which has a small, small shareholding, shareholding of the bank, uh, may put, put in its, its money. The State, State Bank, Bank of India, India which is uh, 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 the largest public sector bank, bank in fact, is the largest bank in India, we also pump in money. So this is right now. Speculation, speculation talk, talk nothing, nothing in writing. writing. In, in fact, fact, very recently, when uh, the, the authorities of uh, Yes Bank, Bank were asked uh, whether it's correct, correct or not, they said in a filing to the stock, stock exchange authorities that, that you know, know nothing, nothing, as, nothing as official, official yet, yet, nothing, nothing on paper. paper. So, so the, the, the point, point, I repeat my point, point this, this is a huge crisis, and, and, and we see this, this is a continuation of a series of crises in the financial sector. We saw it in the non-banking financial companies. We, we saw it in, 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 in the IL and FS infrastructure leasing and financial services group. group. We, we saw it in, in, in the housing finance sector, right. the uh, a a demand demand housing and finance, finance limited. We, we saw it in, in, in the, the cooperative banking, banking sector like, like the PMC. And, and now, now it it's also, also become regretfully uh, this is a crisis now which has hit Yes Bank which is a scheduled commercial bank and a large bank in the private sector. Thanks Thanks a lot, and Paranjoy. Thanks let, for that. And, 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 let, 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 let me put you in touch with uh, Mr. Mr. Yes. Aki Pratacharya. He yes, is please. He's a senior financial journalist, with the former editor of the Business Standard newspaper, and, and, and he's right, right now also uh, the editorial director of Business Standard. And, 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 and his, his Hindi, Hindi is Papa, Sweetie, and Mine. And he can, can explain, explain to you several Bhasha and Santa. Yes, Bank, this is a Sankat. 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 So let, so let me put, put you on to Mr. Mr. Bhattacharya. Thank you. Uh, namaskar. Namaste. So, so, uh, to, to, sabse pehle yehi sawaal aata hai man mein ki depositors ka kya hoga jinke account wahan pe unko kaha gaya ki 50,000 rupay aap usse jyada nahi nikal sakte ek mahine mein aur dusra kyunki hamara connection humko pata nahi kab tak chalega to dusra sawaal ye hai ki economy ke baare mein ab kya kahenge ki cooperative sector mein problem hai, housing mein problem hai, infrastructure finance mein problem hai aur ab ye ek banking, ek aur bank collapse kar raha hai. तो ये दोनों चीजें हैं। 
आपका जो पहला सवाल था कि डिपॉजिट के पैसे का क्या होगा इसमें दो चीज हम इस वक्त नजरअंदाज कर रहे हैं पहला तो, तो यह है कि जो 50,000 का डिपॉजिट विद्रॉल का जो नियम जबरदस्त ने लागू किया है वो एक कृत्रिम व्यवस्था है पर आपको ये शायद मालूम होगा कि सरकार ने एक कानून का परिवर्तन करके हर डिपॉजिट का जो पैसा एक लाख से पांच लाख तक का इंश्योरेंस का व्यवस्था अभी है तो अगर अगर मान लीजिए ये बैंक का कोई परिणाम अगर ऐसा हुआ कि वो बैंक की डिपॉजिट व्यवस्था में पूरी तरह से वो बैंक का विलय होना अवश्य संभव हो जाएगा तो मुझे लगता है कि हर डिपॉजिटर को एटलीस्ट ये इंश्योरेंस होगा कि पांच लाख तक की डिपॉजिट उनकी इंश्योरेंस व्यवस्था के अंदर बरकरार रहेगी पर ये है सेकंड स्टेप और पहला स्टेप ये है कि इस पहले अगले महीने तक एक डिपॉजिटर्स क्योंकि अगर मान लीजिए अगर बैंकिंग व्यवस्था से इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर लेंडिंग के लिए रिटेल सेक्टर लेंडिंग के लिए रियल एस्टेट में लेंडिंग के लिए जो समस्या बैंकिंग सेक्टर में आ रही थी और जो रेगुलेटर जो रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया का जो इंस्पेक्शन सिस्टम जो है उसमें काफी कमियां दिख रही थी जी और वो कमियां का प्रतिफल अगर आप देखते हैं कि एक बैंक का ये इस तरह से स्थिति में पहुंचना और दूसरा जो प्रश्न दिख रहा है ये बैंक की इंटरनल गवर्नेंस के लिए और उसको भी जो सारी जो बैंकिंग व्यवस्था रेगुलेशन और स्टॉक मार्केटेड रेगुलेशन उसका भी बहुत सारे सवाल आएंगे कि किस तरह से ये बैंक एक रिस्ट्रिक्टेड कंपनी है तो सेबी ने क्या-क्या कदम लिए उसका भी छानबीन होनी चाहिए जो रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया जो रेगुलेटर है उसने क्या-क्या कदम लिए क्योंकि जो जो विश्वास है बैंक व्यवस्था के ऊपर वो मैं इस उसको को खाने में चुकी हूँ और वो अटकने के लिए अच्छी बात नहीं है जी ठीक है बहुत शुक्रिया बहुत शुक्रिया एके भट्टाचार्य जी वी आल्सो हैड इन दैट वीडियो वेटरन फाइनेंशियल जर्नलिस्ट एके भट्टाचार्य हु वाज स्पीकिंग टू अस एस इस क in fact, some months ago, we spoke to independent market analyst Hemendra Hazari on the origins of the crisis and he explained what would happen and what would this lead to. Let's see what he had to say. In Yes Bank, and why you describe what has happened in the recent past in the bank as a grim Shakespearean tragedy, a tragedy where you quote Claudius and Hamlet saying, when sorrows come, they come not single spies, but in battalions. And you say he might as well have been speaking about the woes of the shareholders of Yes Bank. And if you can summarize why there's been this upheaval that has happened at the top of Yes Bank and its board of directors, if you can succinctly summarize recent developments. You see, this happened really a year ago when RBI came out with the disclosure of all banks that for the year ending FY, I think 2017, banks had to disclose where there was divergence from what their published accounts, audited accounts were reporting and what the RBI inspection had found. And if it exceeded 15% of the RBI's estimates of NPAs or of net profits, what the bank that had That is reported, a non-performing assets of the bank. That's of unpaid loans. Correct. Which are not being paid back. Stressed financial assets. Right. Yes, please go on. 
So if it was, no, the stress financial assets would normally include restructuring also, but okay. this does not include that. So if the RBI inspectors found from their calculations that the gross NPAs exceeded 15% of what the NPAs reported by the bank, they would have to disclose it. If the profits were 15% lower than what they had reported, then they had to disclose it. Now, here was the first instance that the public and analysts would come to know whether the banks were actually fudging their account. This is evidence of fudging. Now, it was found in Yes Bank that for two successive years, for I think FY16 and FY17, uh, the bank had reported divergence. Now, this is very critical because <clears throat> the market valuation of the banks, which are listed on the stock exchange, is determined by the profits and the NPAs that they report. So if you are suppressing that number, <clears throat> you are actually distorting uh, valuation and market pricing. You are also the senior management salary performance is all linked to these numbers. So you are distorting senior management compensation. So to me, it is a very big faux pas that you have been pulled up by the banking regulator for cooking your books. Okay. And in my opinion, if a bank reports it once, it is absolutely shameful. If it reports it in two consecutive years, the CEO, the chief financial officer, the head of the audit committee of the board and the auditor must be immediately replaced. And our next story is about an issue which is on everyone's mind these days, the novel coronavirus. The number of cases in India has moved to 31 and across the world, governments are scurrying, they're struggling to contain the spread of the epidemic. We talked, about, we talked yesterday about how the public health system in India was prepared or whether it was prepared to actually handle the crisis that might be coming in the next two months. Today, we look at another aspect of the novel coronavirus outbreak, that is the economic angle. What impact? will this outbreak have on the world economy and on India's economy? To know more about this, we talked to senior economic journalist Anindya Chakravarti. Here is what he had to say. Thank you so much, Anindya, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, uh, before we go into the more specific issues about India, we've been talking about the coronavirus, novel coronavirus for a few days. Yesterday, we looked at what is the preparedness of the public health system mm. and the kind of measures that are being taken. Mm. But there's also a very important aspect that is the economic aspect. Yes. So uh, could you first talk about the global picture itself? What do you, because there's been a lot of speculation, mm. is there going to be a recession? What is, you know, how is it going to affect growth? Yeah. Especially big economies like the China and US are involved. Yeah. So what do you think is a possibility in the next couple of months at least? So I'm going to go by what is a new report by Nomura. Mm -hmm. And uh, they say that they expect first quarter, which is January to March, growth, GDP growth in China, mm -hmm. and that is their best case scenario, right. to be zero, okay. no growth at all. And if things go badly, uh, then there could be a negative 1% growth, right. which means that the economy contracts, which is not surprising, because how has China actually dealt with it? And it's dealt with it remarkably well, because the WHO representatives who went to China, they say that it's right. been actually a very good, uh, what they've done is quite uh, um, quite remarkable. Uh, then what they've done is they've shut down entire cities right? and they've shut down factories, they've shut down transport systems, people have not been able to go from here to there right. and this actually hit China around their Lunar New Year, New Year right? Yeah. And uh, therefore many people who would have gone home, they're migrant workers who big work in these mega factories right? where Apple and all, Foxconn and all produce uh, the th electronic goods and various other goods. We know China is like the factory of the world. Right. Right? They will find it difficult to go back. Mm -hmm. So even if factories reopen, it's not as if everyone's going to come back immediately. Shops are closed. The entire trading system is down. Discretionary spending is down. And uh, early reports suggest that there's temporary unemployment in China, mm -hmm. which means that China, which is a big driver of global growth will see a recession, not a recession because it's a single quarter. It could be two quarters. In that case, we'll have to say it's a recession, but it will see a contraction right. of its economy. UBS believes that global growth, mm -hmm. its best case scenario, will uh, go down for, I think they had initially projected about 4.1%, but it could go down. Uh, sorry, they projected about 3.1%, and that will go down at least to about uh, two and a half, 2.6, right. and it could actually half right. in a 
uh, in the worst case scenario, which is which is pretty bad if you look at it, especially for us because we're already reeling under a very bad domestic demand problem. Right. So definitely there's a problem out there. Mm -hmm. And with specifically with regard to India, what do you see as the key sectors that might actually get affected because of this? So uh, if we look at what China directly supplies to us, and uh, in, I think in the first nine months of this fiscal, uh, imports from China account for about 20 odd percent of everything that we've imported right. from the world. Most of it is electronic goods, right? And uh, electronic components, because we really don't make, make those chips and stuff that go into uh, our phones, laptops, or anything that is made. Right. So uh, that is a big chunk, mm -hmm. uh, about I think uh, 16 billion dollars, 15 billion dollars worth of uh, stuff is was brought in in the last um, nine months and from anecdotal evidence we understand uh, as I was speaking to uh, news click reporters and they were saying that um, they have been traveling they one of them told me actually Trina uh, told me that she had been trying to get her phone fixed and we know how you get your phone fixed right you don't really go to the people who right. manufacture it because they'll rob you so you go to a <laughs> gray market guy who says I'll fix it and what they fix it is, is this Chinese right. parts. They've not been able to do that because mm -hmm. Chinese goods are not coming in. Mm -hmm. So they've not been able to do it. They're quiet and they're not answering phone calls. I broke a, a cell phone screen, which I happen to do quite often. And I've not been able to get it replaced right. because the guy I go to says that I don't have anything right. because it's not coming from China. Right, right. And there's a uh, report which came out last uh, week, uh, last month actually, late last month which suggested that there's been a significant drop in shipments from China. Mm -hmm. And that means that often what happens is that a company, a manufacturing company, uh, they keep stock, right? It's not as if that they import things just and when they need it. So they have about 45 days of stock. But we know that the coronavirus thing started sometime in, uh, December. in, the, in December. And China started shutting things down from mid-January. So it has already been a significant amount of time, almost 45 days, that cycle is coming. Right. So people will be out of inventory. They will not know what to do. And uh, a lot of people will be stuck with inventory, which they cannot sell, stock. And there'll be people who will not have inputs to produce things. Right. So that's a big problem, which mm -hmm. means that the entire cycle of production will get disrupted. Mm -hmm. We know very few people are being employed out there already. So now if they are also sacked, you know what will happen. Right. So another key question is the kind of possible responses governments can have in such a situation. So yes. we know the public health angle to it, the kind of, say, new testing centers, more testing kits, more investment, of mm. course. But also in the realm of the economy itself, what are the possibilities that governments have in terms of responding? So let's look at what China is doing. And mm. one has to understand that China is a much more centralized economy, even if it looks that, that it's a market economy, which it partly is. Uh, China has not responded by cutting rates. Mm. Right? We know that the Fed has actually cut the Fed fund rate in advance, anticipation that things will go all right. So what China has done essentially is to release funds. It's right. made it easier for uh, companies to raise funds, pick it up. It has also said that, okay, repayment schedules will be reworked for right. you. So right. if you have taken a loan, mm -hmm. you'll be given some sort of a moratorium. You'll mm -hmm. get time to do it. And it's easing supplies. Right. So it's, it's taking care of these supply chains because... Such things essentially affect a supply chain, production supply chain, so that things can quickly come back mm -hmm. into place. And uh, the way in which China has responded to this, uh, of course, one would assume that China would probably be better at it than most other countries. When it comes to India, we know that the government of India has actually failed to even deal with domestic problems. It has failed to deal with demand issues right. already. And uh, I actually do not uh, really hold out any hope that if things go bad in India, that we'll be able to deal with it in any way. One response, the response, essentially, this is not a demand issue. This is a supply issue. Right. So on top of a demand issue, if you have a supply problem, mm -hmm. then I don't know what the government will do with it. Right. The RBI might cut rates, but frankly, who's raising money in any case that right. they'll need to cut rates? And employment especially could be very badly affected in such a scenario. Luckily for India, and mm -hmm. this is the, uh, ironically in a certain sense, that the fact that we are not that dependent on international trade mm -hmm. kind of insulates us. But even Nomura's worst case scenario for India is also a 1% drop in GDP growth. Okay. Now we know India's GDP growth rate is terrible right now, so 1% drop is a big drop. Um, 
the big uh, big areas which employ people already are already doing badly mm -hmm. so uh, let's look at construction and real estate the biggest employer after agriculture and uh, that has actually not it's not going to really be hit by coronavirus what will be hit is another big employer which is trade hotels and restaurants and right. you know tourism which is uh -huh. one big chunk of uh, employers and we are already seeing that happen so that will definitely right. be affected people will be scared mm -hmm. about it thank you so much anindya that's all we have for this episode of let's talk so we'll meet you on monday at 3 pm with the latest news developments of the day until then keep watching news click